Hello, welcome back to Audit Trails. This is Jake from Auditor Sense, and today we're going to be discussing NIST Control AC6 from 853. <clears throat> AC6 focuses on least privilege. So the control description reads, the organization employs the principle of least privilege, allowing only authorized access for users or a process on behalf of users which are necessary to accomplish assigned tasks in accordance with organizational missions and business functions. So what does that mean? Essentially, you don't want to give a specific user more access than what is required to perform their specific job function. So this will limit on um, people being able to perform functions or, or modify their machines or modify servers or anything like that that they shouldn't have access to. Or better yet, if we look from a business perspective, um, somebody in IT administration probably shouldn't have the ability to modify and approve financial business transactions. So just keep that in mind as you're designing these procedures and policies. Um, as discussed in previous videos here at Auditor Sense, we do focus on the moderate baseline for NIST 853. So for AC6 specifically, there are several enhancements that are required for a moderate satisfaction of this control. So I also want to read the descriptions on those enhancements. So for AC6 enhancement one, the description reads, the organization explicitly authorizes access to defined security functions and security related information. So what does that mean? Taking that principle of least privilege and making sure that access to a security function or security related information, which you as an organization will define, is authorized. So that could be through role-based role access control matrix or something like that. And I'll get into, in our next slide, next slide or two, I'll get into what we should be looking for when performing an audit against these controls and the enhancement to satisfy a control like this. So if we look at AC6 Enhancement 2, the description reads, the organization requires that users of information system accounts or roles with access to a defined security function or security information use non-privileged accounts or roles when assessing accessing non-security functions. So essentially your IT administrators or, or a privileged user within your organization, they will have two accounts. So when they're performing their basic job duties, anything that's not related to a security function or security relevant information, they're using their regular non-privileged account. That's key. AC6 Enhancement 5. The organization restricts privileged accounts on the information system. So essentially what you're looking for is that your organization just isn't handing out privileged accounts all to everybody, every user, there has to be a justification, there has to be a reason for their specific job function. AC6 Enhancement 9, the information system audits the execution of privileged functions. So what does that look like? Um, those privileged accounts, what are they doing? You guys want to be auditing them, you want to make sure that they are acting within scope and that there's there's really no malicious intent or malicious behavior behind any of the privileged functions that they're performing. And lastly, for the moderate baseline, AC6 Enhancement 10. The information system prevents non-privileged users from executing privileged functions to include disabling, circumventing, or altering implemented security safeguards slash countermeasures. So what does that mean? So a non-privileged user, so a regular user of your information system, they shouldn't be able to go around your security mechanisms to gain more access or perform a function that wouldn't be within scope of their regular job duties. So making sure that that least privilege, that principle of least privilege is really enforced here. That, that's the key with this enhancement. All right, so like I said, I do wanna discuss what we'd be looking for um, for each enhancement and, and the control itself when performing an audit against this control. So let's start with AC6. So AC6, 
what we're really looking for here is a defined and detailed principle of least privilege within your procedures. So that can be within your access control procedures, um, or we can also be looking for a role-based access control matrix. So I'll go over the, I have one of those in this presentation, so I'll just show you how it breaks down people's individual roles and what they should have access to. Um, you could also look for screenshot evidence of like a user attempting to change their permissions or, or access to information and they get denied. So that would also prove that you do have least privilege in place to some extent. Now let's discuss those individual enhancements that we went over and really what we're looking for to satisfy those enhancements. So AC1, we're looking for several things. First, we're looking for defined information for which access must, must be authorized. So what is that security relevant information? That can include firewall rules, um, filtering rules, and like your routers. It could include a key management system, information within that. Um, baseline configuration parameters. It could also include your access control list. And then we're also looking for defined security functions that are deployed within hardware, software, firmware. So that could include system accounts, um, how you configure access authorizations, so like your privileges, permissions, stuff like that, um, the events that you guys audit, or, or setting like intrusion detection uh, parameters, stuff like that. And then lastly, with the first enhancement, so enhancement one, you are looking for explicitly authorized personnel. So this would include security administrators, network administrators, um, maintenance personnel, system maintenance personnel, programmers, stuff like that, your privileged users. You want to look for explicitly authorized access for those privileged users. So let's move into enhancement two we discussed, the non-privileged accounts. So users, we want to be looking for your defined security functions, which we talked about previously, or that security relevant information to which users have access to. So provide a list of those security functions or the information that you're that's defined within your procedures. And then lastly, personnel with roles requiring privileged access to certain environments or applications should always be using non-privileged accounts when accessing other system functions. So make sure that unless it requires a privileged account, so security related information, security function, that they are always using their non-privileged account. That has to be their main account that they use day in and day out, unless it's related to their security function. That is key. Let's move on to the next enhancement. That's enhancement five, the restriction of privileged accounts. So the use of privileged accounts on an information system should be restricted to specific roles. So that's often defined within policy and defined within a role-based access control matrix. And we'll look, we'll look at one of those on the next slide. Then enhancement nine, you want to be auditing the execution of privileged functions. So screenshot evidence of those audits could be done. I know a lot of the times, for example, in like AWS, um, you can use like CloudTrail, stuff like that. Just make sure that specific functions are getting audited, especially especially the privileged functions, that's key. And then the last enhancement is enhancement 10, <clears throat> the prevention of non-privileged users executing privileged functions. So a lot of the times what's most helpful here is like screenshot evidence of a user with non-privileged access um, trying to disable or, or circumvent a security function to gain access to, whether it be a function or information that they wouldn't normally have access to. Um, obviously, you would want to make sure that that access gets denied and they're not successfully able to circumvent your security countermeasures and stuff like that. Alrighty, and then as promised, we'll look at a uh, role-based access control matrix. This is just an example. So if we look at the administrator in this column right here, so that would be a <coughs> uh, privileged account. So they can create accounts, they'll set access, they'll create a um, passwords, reset passwords, stuff like that. Whereas if we look at a standard user, so potentially a non-privileged user, they don't have any of that access. 
They don't have any access to finan financials. They can do some reporting, limited of course, and then communications. So, and it just breaks it down by a specific role. And like I said, the principle of least privilege, the key is that they only have the required access to perform their necessary job duties. So for instance, there wouldn't be any requirement for, let's say an accountant to create user accounts. It just doesn't make sense. And then lastly, I like to end these all on the NIST guidance page with, on their website. So if you go to NIST and then look at AC6, access control family, least privilege, if we look at the moderate baseline, I've highlighted it here, those are the enhancements required to satisfy AC6. Alrighty, that wraps this episode of Audit Trails up. Thanks for tuning in.